This is part 6 in the restoration of a 1990 GT Performer. Today I'm going to be looking for some replacement parts for pieces that are missing or broken, as well as reproducing some decals. One of the main reasons that I chose to restore this bike was because it was so complete and original. However, there are still a few parts that need to be replaced or missing completely. The most obvious of these is the front wheel, which is completely missing and has been replaced by this very cheap spoked version. I've been on the lookout for a replacement, but it's a little challenging because they only made this style for a few years, and even less with the correct logo. I'll be looking for one that matches the rear wheel. In addition, I'll also be needing a new set of tires and tubes. The original barrel adjusters for the brake levers were completely destroyed, so I'll need a new set of those. The free wheel was broken, so I'll be looking for a replacement as close to the original as possible. While mainly it was the bearings in the bottom bracket that were completely destroyed, I think I'm just going to replace all the components. This will ensure that the bike stays in riding condition for many years to come. The front brake cable had a crimp in the housing and was completely seized up. Since there is nothing rare or special about the front brake cable, I'm just going to replace the whole unit to ensure that it works properly. The bike still had its original rear reflector and rear bracket, so I'll be looking for a matching set for the front. While nothing is quite as easy as it appears online, I was able to find most of the parts without too much trouble. After watching eBay for about a month, a good front wheel finally popped up. It's in great condition and has the same GT logo as the rear wheel, which is what I was looking for. The tires that I decided to go with are Kenda K55s with a new set of tubes to match. The barrel adjusters were a little hard to come by. Basically, this is the only set that I could find in the appropriate size. As you may have seen in the previous video, I stripped the black paint off of them so they will look closer to the originals. I wanted to make sure that the new freewheel that I'll be using had the same chrome finish and the same number of teeth. In this case, it's 16. I was able to find a matching front reflector, however the bracket is slightly incorrect. Originally, the reflector would have been mounted to the handlebars. As a bonus, I was able to find a set of reflectors to mount to the mag wheels. And last but not least, I happen to have this set of handlebars with an original set of GT grips on them. They are in very nice condition, even though they reproduce these now, these are original and will look great on this bike. The decals on this performer are in fairly good condition, especially considering it's been through an acid bath. That being said, there are still a few that are missing, so I'm going to reproduce them myself. Instead of being stamped on the bottom bracket shell, this bike would have originally had the serial number printed on a label in the same location. I've also recently acquired an original Diacomp 1990 front brake cable. While it's too short to use in this build, I'm going to copy the labeling on the brake housing. I'll be starting this process by finding the best reference pictures that I can online. I then use Adobe Illustrator to trace them in vector format. Some of the decals shown are going to be used in future parts of this build. One tip that I have is to make sure that you print them out of Adobe Acrobat. This gives you complete control of the scaling and you can make sure they print out the correct size. These shipping labels will be a pretty close match to what the original serial number decals were printed on. However, since they are just paper, I'm going to cover them in some clear matte finish to give them a little bit more longevity. I've looked at as many pictures as I could find to try to get the placement correct. In this case, the decal starts about 6 o'clock. This allows the last part of the serial number to be red even when the bike is standing up. Now I'll switch to white water slide decal paper. This time I'll be spraying gloss clear on to seal the decals. This is probably a ridiculous detail that no one will ever notice but me. However, this is the kind of stuff that I love. And that about wraps it up for the replacement parts and decals. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.